Today we're going to be talking about the Sigma 85mm f1.4. But first, if you're new to the channel, my name is Anson, and on this channel we talk about filmmaking gear, specifically gear for the budget conscious filmmaker. So if that's you, consider subscribing. I do want to mention that I was sent this lens from Sigma, but they haven't requested I say anything specifically about this lens, and so you're going to get my full and honest opinion. I also want to mention the fact that I did shoot everything for this review on the Sigma FP, but you can use this lens on other L-mount cameras cameras as well as E-mount cameras and so if you're an A7S 3 owner you can use this lens if you are a Panasonic S5 user or S1H user you can use this lens as well. A lot of footage is using a Tiffin Black Pro Mist and that's simply because I figured any filmmaker that is going to be using this lens is probably using that filter and so even though this is a lens review yes I'm using a diffusion filter because why not? Why not? Life is too short. <laughs> so with that being said, let's break down what I think about this lens, starting first with overall image quality. Now, 85mm is one of my favorite focal lengths. I love shooting more telephoto. It's easy to get something that's cinematic and focuses on the subject because of the lens compression. But with this lens, with the f1.4, literally, like, you are focused on the subject, and that is one of the main selling points of this lens, is between that lens compression and the bokeh, because of how fast this lens is, you are gonna have some serious subject isolation. With the f1.4 as well, you get some low light performance. So overall, I do feel like the image that you get out of this lens is a quality, quality image. So then let's talk about build quality. Overall build quality is top notch, but a couple of key features that just blow me away. Hold please. You have a declicked aperture. On a Sigma still lens, you have a manual aperture and it's declicked. But I have a switch that can actually turn on the click for photographers. So if you want to manually control the aperture, you can click it. Click it or tick it. That, that's a thing. The other selling point for me is the overall size. For as hefty as this lens is, actually feels pretty proportion with the Sigma FP. That's not easy. This is a tiny camera. So the fact that you're gonna have a lens that performs the way that this lens does, and it's not gonna offer a lot more bulk onto the Sigma FP, that's definitely a winning feature for me. You do have a smooth focusing ring. I don't think it's focused by wire. Um, I was trying to do a little bit of research on what focusing system they're actually using, uh, but it doesn't seem to be focused by wire, but it doesn't have hard stops, like at all. If you're familiar with the 18 to 35 or the 50 to 100, you know that they at least have the kind of like hard stops where you feel it stop, but it keeps on, the wheel keeps on turning. Wheels keep on turning. I'm done. That was bad. I'm not even gonna, no. Mm -mm. There's no recovering from that. But this one doesn't have those stops at all. So I do wish it had more of a tactile feel. It feels like focused by wire, but hey, at least it's not focused by wire. I think it may be some like updated version of focus by wire. Long story short, you can predictably rack focus. So I'll count that as a win. And so that's what the focusing ring is like. You do have a manual focus and autofocus switch. You have a focus hold button there. So all the key features that you would have with an art series lens or with a flagship lens. So between image quality and build quality, what are my overall thoughts and who would I recommend this for? I'll be the first to say this is not an inexpensive lens. This lens is about $1,200. It retails for about $1,200. That's not cheap. But again, I've said this on the channel before, this is about relativity as far as budget conscious. If you look at some equivalent lenses, you're gonna be spending easily four to $500 more getting something from Sony or even Canon for that matter. I wanna make this clear, this channel is not about cheap lenses all the time, but rather if you're looking at something good quality, what's the best value? And this lens is the best value for what it offers in the market that it offers it. So if you're looking for an amazing 85 millimeter F1.4, a low light bokeh telephoto, short telephoto beast, this is that lens. Again, you might show a little bit more, but this is going to be investment into your future. And so I think value-wise, this lens is a no-brainer. So that's it for me. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy the video, make sure to give it a like. And if you're digging the overall content from the channel, consider subscribing. Thank you guys for joining. Go and find your journey. Go embrace life. Stay safe. Be happy. Support each other. Wash those hands, and I'll see you here next time. Peace.